Um, I've heard of this story a couple of times. I think I've seen it highlighted maybe where? Um, where else in the highlight? I think this came as a consequence of the conversation. You remember when um, Trump quite brilliantly said, "I was like, as a fun, a, quite a funny comment, like a retort to, you know, a lot of the conversations around immigration." It's something along the lines of, "Oh, um, if the left are so, you know, keen on welcoming immigrants to this country, why not we build sanctuary towns or whatever space or safe spaces where you know immigrants could go and migrate to?" with no uh, fear of ICE agents coming and deporting them in some of these kind of legacy cities, San Fran, all the places that are kind of left-leaning or mostly Democrat. And, you know, it didn't really get much response from the left, but I kind of thought it was quite funny at the time, right? And it kind of got me thinking about some of the comments a lot of people have said about, you know, the fact that some of these tech companies think they can sort the ills of the world. They think they know more or they know more than the general population or they think they have their finger on the pulse because of all the data sets they're able to kind of get in for people's um, decision-making processes during the day. You know, they have a bit of a, a God complex towards them, but the example that they kind of lean on is, is like, oh, they don't, they, they, they have no idea how to actually govern or how to actually maintain spaces or to, you know, in order, in any way, shape or form in San Francisco, right? Because they have really bad problem with homelessness, Um there's a lot of there's a big problem with housing there. It's very expensive to get any apartments. Uh, people are having to share rooms and live in fucking cupboards and shit. It's just a, a really bad place to be. So I think it's just something along the lines of like, the social experiment has failed because San Francisco has failed because most of the startups are based there, but San Fran is a bit of a dysfunctional city. And this article from um, Guardian kind of expounds on that and says the following. We all suffer why San Francisco techies hate the city. They, they transformed. It's a little article from a writer called Julie Carey Wong. It says the following. It was a beautiful winter day in San Francisco and Zoe was grooving uh, to the soundtrack of the roller skating musical Zandu as she rode in the East Coast to work. 29-year-old tech worker who had, had just passed the Uber building when, without warning, the homeless man jumped into the back lane with his dog, blocking a path. She slammed on the brakes, flew four feet into the air and landed on the pavement, bleeding. It was one of those hardening moments where I was like, even I'm being affected, right? So she was, again, that's an example of just how weird of a place San Fran is, right? This young millennial uh working at an amazing tech startup in U in uber is riding her electric scooter to work on a designated bike lane and some homeless guy jumps out in on there with his dog in hand and makes her fly four feet in the air right it's just a an exact kind of a good kind of contrast to just how crazy it's got in san fran it, it should be noted that Zoe, who asked not to be identified by her real name because she was not authorized by a employee to speak to the press, is not the stereotypical tech worker, bro, who moves to San Francisco for a job immediately starts complaining about the city's dire homelessness crisis. She arrived in 2007 to study at San Fran State University and had a career in arts before attending a coding boot camp and landing a job at a major tech company. But the four and other instance, incidences included getting mugged and having her phone stolen have all contributed to her growing sense of insecurity in the era. She told The Guardian uh, the tale of her scoot interrupted because she said it was a perfect example of her own and perhaps broader community of tech workers increasingly hate hate relationship with San Francisco. This guy needed services to help him, she said at the man who caused a fall. And we all suffer because of the issues that are not being addressed, which is true, right? So all the tech startups are located there because it's become this, you know, utopia where a lot, of, a lot of these amazing stories about tech startups being invested in because of a guy sitting in a coffee shop that looked straggly and some investor walks up to him and gives him a lot of cash, which isn't true, or about people overhearing the beginnings of a certain startup starting, which probably isn't true either. Loads of great stories have kind of stemmed from there. And, you know, again, it's the breeding ground and the home of a lot of the startups we know and love. So everyone kind of goes there. And again, even nowadays with decentralized um, communication, will people be able to live wherever they want around the world with the proliferation of the internet and whatever it may be and communication protocols people are still still infatuated kind of living in this one particular area which is interesting because i wonder if that same thing happens in the uk with kids living in dawson i wonder if there's still again i don't talk to kids that young but i wonder if kids under the age of 25 are still infatuated and coming to east london and living in dawson um, or living in Peckham or New Cross or these kind of hotbed cities where all the hipsters kind of um, go because I, I think for me when I was growing up that was a, an important part of my process right I had to go in order to kind of kind of cut my teeth on the scene figure out what I wanted to do how I wanted to do it that was part of the process so I think people might 
probably to do the same thing now, I assume so, right? I don't think these things change. I think they just kind of continue along the same sort of route. And then eventually people kind of disseminate and start to do other things. But hopefully the home of... Because we've got, we got a similar here in London. We've got that Silicon Roundabout in Old Street. You know, that kind of area from, I don't know, the Argos in Old Street all the way to, I'd say, maybe Curtin Road in Shoreditch is predominantly made up of startups or smaller businesses that pretend to be startups or businesses that are large that pretend to put their office have a satellite office quote unquote in a startup work is co-working space there's a few we works around there too um but yeah london is not really like that because i think people just have to go where the space is not much space in london so you can't really be a tech startup area because you know there won't be that many units to rent but anyway i digress uh, a quarter of a century after the first dot-com bubble the battle of san francisco's soul is over and the tech industry has won but what happens when the victories when the victors realize that they don't particularly like the spoils tech workers are increasingly vocal about their disconnect with the city they fought so hard to conquer in may in may the median market rent for a one-bedroom apartment reached an all-time high three thousand seven hundred seven hundred dollars a month three thousand and seven hundred dollars a month for a one-bedroom apartment oh my god according to rental site zampa meanwhile the city saw a 17 percent increase in its homeless population again abhorrent between 2017 and 2019 um that's what didn't someone say that i forgot who said that like all these tech all these techies are more worried about building the next i think that was when um um those games are making people billionaires and millionaires multi-millionaires right like, oh, we're losing, I think maybe in Peter Thiel, we're losing all the greatest minds that we have available at the moment. They're trying to, they're, they're at a race to make the next Angry Birds as opposed to solving, you know, uh, societal or environmental or world issues, which is very, very true. Even nowadays now, we've got people just starting wanting to make the Uber of whatever instead of actually focusing on issues that are uh, actually impacting people for the most part and not just trying to work out another way to get food to people quicker. It's just like, we had enough. Um... Even Mark Beinhoff, CEO of Salesforce, a San Francisco native who has long urged a com community between the techies and the city, has taken the call in his hometown a train wreck. For Zoe, the newfound financial security from working in tech does not counterbalance her constant a constant sense of being unsafe in the city. She is starving. Uh, she was a starving artist, but she says she's terrified to walk at night. She no longer rides scooters and says the feels triggered when she sees them around the city. She takes Ubers everywhere after dark and asks drivers to watch to make sure she gets inside her building. Mama mia imagine what fucking hell so essentially homeless people in san francisco have become zombies right they're essentially scaring all the natives or the people that are you know essentially propping the city up or allowing it to still thrive so the techies cause the rise in rent right prices because they all kind of flooded the market and like any real estate agent out there that knows you know that's worth their corn they're gonna try and juice them for as much as they can <coughs> there's a limited amount of space planning permissions hard to come by so they can't build more apartments to house these new tech startups so they have to occupy buildings that already exist so that raises the price of them because there's more competition for tenancy that then drives out homelessness because, you know, there are no squats or abandoned buildings to stay in or wherever it may be or shelters. They don't, there's no space for them to be. So where else are they going to go? On the streets. It's a nice climate. They're not going to go anywhere else because it's colder. They can hide underneath bridges and railways, which most of the places have. So essentially, tech startups have techies or startups in general have caused this issue themselves, haven't they? Right? They've actually caused this issue. They've got into a position now where they were, quote unquote, coming in to save it. And now they're cowering away in their Ubers, uh, hiding um, at the back seat, hoping to get home on time or hoping to get home without anyone jumping in front of them with a dog in hand. Mark Zuckerberg lives nearby, but our corner um, is the main prostitution corner of the city, says a miss, uh, said one of the Missonian district apartments she shares with her boyfriend. Uh, this con this con there's condoms and syringes. It's absolutely crazy with how much we pay rent. It's tough because we work in tech, but we ask ourselves every day if we should move. <laughs> it reminds it sounds like it sounds like the heyday of New York, right? You know when everyone talks about Studio Fifty Four and how crazy it was. And if you watch the, the Deuce, right, that's a good example of just like a good representation maybe of how amazing and interesting it must have been, right? Watching old documentaries of you know the factory and Andy Warhol and all this kind of era, like the energy basket like it just it seemed keep hearing like oh my god it was so dangerous and so um crazy that it kind of spawned this reaction from the artist right because they were living in such um hazardous uh, environments where any day given day they could get stabbed they could get robbed they could get chased down the street that energy was kind of feeding into their frenzied nature of the artwork that they were producing so it's no coincidence that you know some of the some of the you know 
um, that basket was able to produce such frenzied amount of artwork living in that city with that kind of energy. It was just kind of the vibration of the train tracks were essentially spread across the canvas that he was painting. But this is San Francisco. Right? This is like made up of like coffee shops and guys with like shitty tattoos on purpose and colorful hair and walk around with bare feet and probably not there or with sandals and shit. And, you know, this is this is meant to be chilled and relaxed and, you know, foosball and hacky sack and all that sort of shit. And now look, it's insane, but they're but they're not paying New York rent or back in the day like you know when you hear uh, Patty Smith right having paying like one hundred twenty dollars a month for rent. It's not that. It's definitely not that. Um, uh, that hearing was uh, da, da, da. but yeah, it continues on. It's a very thought broken st- story. I recommend you check it out. Uh, they've got a bus here that takes Google employees to their uh, actual headquarters again, which is interesting to say the least. Just again, really interesting article, and again, because it shows the unintended. I've, I've every time, every every time I've seen every I've seen this so often. Um, this phrase uttered, and it's always kind of intrigued me ever since I've kind of heard it. It's been introduced in my lexicon, you know. Um, the law of unint um the consequence, the law of unintended consequences, right? Um, the fact that you could do one thing thinking it's a good idea, and then it could have unintended consequences that you never foresaw or you could never foresee. Um, and this is part of it, right? You build this utopia, and then all of a sudden, look what it turns into. Look what it turns into. And then you look at homeless man in the in the, in the window. Like that is really weird, isn't it? You have got this guy here on the outside who's homeless, and you know, begging and humbling himself in order to ask for help from his community in order to kind of you know live another day. And then you got people on the inside who are, I don't know how much they're paying per drinks. How much ahead it is, how much the bill's gonna be, the average medium spend is, but it's probably high. How much people's outfits are, it's just insane. The contrast, man, that is an insane, insanely good picture in all the wrong for all the wrong reasons. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. A really cool article um, from the Guardian. Uh, it's it's titled "We All Suffer: Why San Francisco Techies Hate the City They Transformed." I'll link in the show notes. You guys to check out. Uh, written by a one Julia Carey Wong. Great, great article. Really recommend you check it out. <laughs> 